I'll just say um, everyone welcome to today's meeting. Um, we're going to talk about loudness with Joseph McGuire over in Washington. And uh, I'll let you KSVR. introduce yourself. KSVR. <laughs> well, I'll just tell you a little bit what's happening. Uh, <clears throat> at this time on the week of the 20th, the people who want to come back to the radio station are going to be able to come back. We don't have a big, huge group of DJs or music hosts, as I call them. And it's we're what's called a vaccinated college, so <clears throat> they have to be vaccinated or have good reason not or uh, and wear masks. I don't know if anybody, Jay, Jay, or Jay Inslee just put the hammer down and <clears throat> made Washington State, I think, the most restrictive state in this country. Nice. And I approve. I approve yeah, his message. That's nice to hear. Anyway, so um, thank you all for coming. I'm glad it's actually an intimate little meeting. I'm not sure I could take a huge group of people. But I'm going to, I have a little uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, presentation. And so I'm going to share my screen. There it is. So does everybody see this? Yes. Okay. Okay, good. So this is loudness units, an introduction. So I want to say that loudness is a measurement of sound. And we do have actually many measurements of sound in the audio world. We have VU meters, we have peak meters. We have waveforms. Uh, we have uh, meters that show different values like uh, RMS. So loudness is just another measurement of sound. But the best measurement of sound is your ear. And what is behind your ear, which is your brain. You know what's good and you know what's bad. And you need to learn the difference between the two, but I think most people here know. And I just want to preface this with saying this is all about a recording shows. This is not about doing live. Live is a much different animal. So um, why are we talking about loudness since we already have all these measurements? Well, because loudness is a standard in so many different places. In the European Union, it is... Uh, a standard for both uh, television and, and radio. In America, it's only a standard for television. Radio can do whatever it wants. It can be as loud as it wants or whatever. Uh, there was a act that was passed by Congress called the Calm Act. And then other organizations are using loudness as a way to say this is how loud as a standard, it should be. Like, for instance, YouTube is negative 14 loudness. So, and LUF stands for loudness units full scale. So, um, let's go back to television America and in the European Union. The main reason that they came up with the loudness standards was because commercials were very loud. Even though they fell within zero VU or negative three peak, they were still, as we all know, very loud. So they fiddled with things using compression and stuff so that it would fit into the VU standard or the peak level standard and came up with a way of making commercials loud. So they had to come up with a perception of how we hear sound. And we, they did tests. They did people. They actually went around and, and tested people on how they heard things through sine waves and, and tones. So uh, that's the standardization. So um, this is what we mostly use to see sound. It's a, obviously called a waveform. And... Uh, this just shows sound as a visual representation. And I'm sure most people know this. Most people have used this. 
least I use it a lot. And I just like to go through what I consider the parts of the waveform that you use. We have the zero point up here. This is where you're not supposed to put your sound above. Then we have the middle point, which is called infinity, because I believe that it's there's no absolute silence of sound. And then there's the fringe parts, or there's the peaks, like this individual peak here and this individual peak here. And the peaks uh, are what I call the fringe. And then I, this is what I call the heart of the sound. And this has to do with dynamic range. How far above the peak is above the infinity <coughs> and the heart of the sound. So this is a loudness meter. It's uh, a free meter that you can get off the internet and put in as a plug-in. And it'll show you various loudness standard that they have chosen to represent. Um, I'll just stop here and say, is everybody following along okay? Okay. So um, now we'll go through what the loudness meter is doing and showing us. Again, it's a representation of sound. So we have, uh, we have, this is the, uh, see, the meter, there's two, two parts to the loudness meter. There is an actual peak kind of meter, and there's an actual graph that'll show you the sound over time. And so we'll start with integrated. Integrated is the entire sound. It kind of listens to it. And as you see here in the gray area, it starts up here and it goes and it just sort of shows things going a little bit down, a little bit down. And it's just gathering information over the entire file to find the, uh, to tell you what the sound, uh, sound is in LUFS at the end. And then there's short term, and that's this white line. And that shows, uh, it's a three second window in the past. And the three second window gives you, you can see that it's, giving you a little more jagged line, but it's still like uh, easy to watch. And you can yeah. see, well, maybe this part is a little low, even though the integrated is showing because it's, it's including all the past information. And this is only including the three seconds of information. So it's including all that information. And this is showing, well, maybe the sound is going down a little bit too much and you could look at the waveform and bring it up. And then this is silence or like pause in the talking and so forth and so on. And then there's momentary. This is like a peak peak meter. It's going up and down and it's only 400 milliseconds sampling of in the past. And so along with that is a peak uh, meter or a peak uh, part of the sound uh, loudness. And it's called true peak because as you may or may not know, you sample sound to make to digitize it. It sort of slices up in little bits. True peak looks at the sound between the samples. And so that's pretty much how the loudness scale uh, works. And it generally shows um, uh, the uh, just like the one peak that, that was the highest. And then there's another aspect of loudness, and that's called loudness uh, range or loudness uh, audio range. And that's the dynamic range between the highest and the lowest over time. Um, if you have um, a lot of sound down in the heart of the waveform, you'll have a very low between one to four loudness range. If you have a lot of sound that's peaking up higher, that means you'll have a higher dynamic range between, say, seven and nine. And that way you know whether it's over-compressed or not. And so... Um, 
I'm going to stop here a second to see if there's any questions about this, because I know this is a very technical thing. No questions? Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the other aspects of loudness that, like, for instance, a loudness unit is equal to a decibel. So one loudness is equal to one decibel. So if you raise one loudness, you'll be raised by one decibel. Um, then, um, so uh, you also have- an, I have a this, question. Yes, you, yes, please. Explain the difference between the decibel and the loudness unit. I mean, I know it's a different measurement, for example, as in Pro Tools, you have a gain and an normalize, and that's in decibels. It's not in loudness. Okay. And they're close, but they're not the same. There's kind of difference. Well, actually, there is no difference between a loudness unit and a decibel. They are all equal. So if you raise your program one loudness unit, and you see that it's one decibel, been raised one decibel, what was the thing in Pro Tools that it did? I didn't quite catch that. Well, they don't have a loudness meter built in. You can get a plug in. But they have gain and normal, and that's okay. measured in, in decibels. Right. And that's what we use, you know. And it's, okay. But, it, for example, we we actually set the gain around minus 25, and then when I measure it in another program like the audio phonics, it comes out about minus 24. So there seems to be a difference. I think I know what you're there. talking about. I think you're talking about the other older standard for a level. It's called root mean square or RMS. And there's a, not a lot of difference. You could actually use root mean square to get a level if you don't have a loudness meter. Um, you don't have all the other functionality that you have with the loudness meter. But I have noted uh, the the one of the big one of the biggest things about loudness is you can set a gate to ignore really uh, certain high levels and certain low levels. So that if you get a big long silence, RMS stills working, whereas the gate says, no, this is silence at this level, we will stop listening and adding to the integrated sound. And I can think you can see it right here as you see that the, the sound doesn't drop very much. And it, I believe this is where a gate kicks in. Uh, and normally the lowest gate is like at a negative 10 loudness. Does that answer your question? Yes, that, that helps a lot. Okay. So um, the... Um, One other thing that we that I have to talk to before we move on about loudness is it differentiates differentiates between mono and stereo. There's it's because it's perceived loudness, it's not based on the meter itself, but how and you should see the algorithm. It's like 500 pages of a formula. <laughs> and so um when it basically lowers the level of loudness by three luffs when you do a mono signal. So if it's 19 in mono, it'll be 16 in stereo because people perceive stereo as louder, even though we don't see it necessarily as louder on a, on a VU meter or on a waveform or such like that. It's all perception. That's what makes the loudness meter so important is it is perception of loudness. So I will continue. So uh, I, I, I took a capture. Now this is the Ulean loudness meter. And I just wanna say that it's a free download for as a plugin. And as a free plugin, you can use it to, and it doesn't, with in the free version, you can't drop it onto the file or onto the plugin standalone and measure loudness. You have to play it. And I think it's something like $49. So if you want to get it, you, you, you get a little more functionality uh, and you can drop on. I have another one that I can show you, which is actually free from a company called Orban. 
um, which makes uh, processors for uh, audio for sending to the tower, uh, to the transmitter. But it doesn't show you as much information as a graph as it does here. But it's a free one. So, you know, free is always better. <laughs> it's always good. So um, this is showing you doing its work. And see, it's doing the loudness range. It's doing the short term. It's doing the integrated. It's gathering. And you see, it comes standard for the television broadcasting standard of negative 23. So it's saying anything above negative 23 is in the red. Oh, don't go back. Anything in, the, in is negative 23 is in the red. Anything below negative 23 is, is not. And uh, this shows you a sort of sideways graph. And then there's the stereo and mono. And not that I can plug it, but that's how the Uline works. That's how it gathers. So for instance, the highest true peak was negative five decibels. Um, the highest, the loudness range was 3.2, which means it was not necessarily compressed, but there was a lot of sound in that one file. So, um, um, the, um, this is where I, oh, hello, there's more people. <laughs> I stopped screen sharing, apparently. <laughs> anyway, um, so the next thing I was going to show you is some examples. So uh, I, will, I will go back to screen sharing. And uh, but before I do that, did did we have any questions? I'll guess. Robin, not. Okay. are you asking again? I see your looks like you're talking, but you're muted. Okay. okay. Um, explain the difference between dynamic range and loudness, and why keeping this at this standard makes the dynamic range better. Okay, well, the they put the dynamic range in there, and I think I'll show you my first example, and I'll that I think that'll explain it a little bit more. Um, as soon as I find it. Welcome to everyone who's uh, just joined us, by the way. Um, excuse me for taking time to do this. Oh, no worries. Okay, everybody can see this now? Yeah. Okay, so this is a file. So if you take a look at this part of the waveform, this is someone's uh, radio show. If you take a look at this part of the waveform, you see there's a lot of dynamic range. And if you take a look at the music here, you see that it has very little dynamic range. So in the perceived loudness, this is considered loud as this is. And so that's why, uh, but if we go back to the um, original initial state before I did anything, we'll take a second to do that. This is what it looked like. And then I took each of those pieces and did a loudness normalization on them and so this was very loud and this was very soft. And um, when we go back to the, what I did to it, you'll see that this became very uh, small in waveform, but not in sound because the perceived sound was the same here 
as it is here. But the loudness range was different by about uh, two or three loudness units. Does that help? Yeah, I, I guess you'll explain it more as we go along because one of the big things that I've tried to tell people, we, we, we get used about 150 audio recordings a week. You use 150 these, what? Audio port recordings. You know, and, right. And, and there are these people that have it so hot and they don't understand why they should be working down in a much well, tighter mode because they've destroyed their dynamic range. It's completely terrible audio. Well, I can tell you, I, I think I can tell you what they're trying to do. And I wasn't going to go into compressors and limiters because that's an entirely different concept. But what I think they've tried to do is they tried to make everything even across by using a compressor. So that um, if I did this, I could make this, this, oops, I could make this line with a compressor the same way, look at this. And so all of a sudden, everything would sound perceived loud and harsh. So I think, because actually I've done that myself, so I've made that mistake. I've made that error. So if we look at another example, um, and I'm not trying to pick on any particular people, but this is, uh, if anybody ever uses the um, news service organization, they have Washington News Service, they have that, and they use their news, the six-minute news segment, this is what it looks like when you first load it up. Does this look like a lot what your your programmers are making? Exactly. I mean, it's just, yes. It's horrendous. <laughs> yes, because it is highly compressed. And so the only thing I can do is make it, and see, to bring it down to the level that matches the rest of Skagit Talks, the program I put it in, I have to bring it way down. Now, one of the things you can do in the world that people tell you to do is you can always go in and do a peak normalization of negative three, but that doesn't change it that much. And so it's better, well, again, I'm not gonna go into loudness normalization because this is a, a an entirely different topic. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of free software, there's actually no free software I know that can do loudness normalization. Whereas peak normalization, everything has. So um, these are some of the examples of the differences of, so we go back to here, and this is the, um, this is the, the segment that is done for the, um, uh, what's it called, Stephanie? The um, the weekly show about democracy. Um, the the three-minute piece. Oh, the 2021 talks. Yeah, 2021 talks. I I know that. I use it all the time. <laughs> anyway, you guys do a good job, by the way. Cool. And so you can see that that the waveforms is is pretty good, and there's a lot of dynamic range, and you can hear. And uh, I just reduced it a little bit just so that it matches and it becomes um, what I shoot for, which is uh, 20 LUFs in mono or 18 or 17 LUFs in stereo. And um, you could add a little compression to just a little, little, little limiting to take off some of the, the fringy elements. But but otherwise, it's really a good good file. I I applaud and approve. If you want my approval, <laughs> you guys do a good job. And so, um, that was my good example. That's why I wanted to show it. Is I didn't have to do anything to it. It it was just reduce it a little bit because I have a specific standard, and that's one of the most important things about the loudness standard compared to peak levels or VU levels, is you're shooting for a level, a standard level. Like I said, negative 24, negative 23, negative 14. And if you put things on YouTube and it's above negative 14, they will push it down. 
I'm not sure if they bring it up. And sometimes if you specifically, if you've got a lot of elements of sound, specifically for music, if you have set to this level, then changing it can really uh, unbalance your sound levels on all your elements. So um, I'm just hoping for more questions <laughs> that I can answer, or if I've answered all your questions, I'm done. I have one. Yes, please. I am realizing how basic I am with this stuff. I just put my audio file in Audacity and hope for the best. So this is really next level for me. So I appreciate it. Um, so when you have an audio file, you edit it. Do you have it edited first with all that stuff before you oh, apply yes. these other apps? Oh, yes. Yeah. You okay. So you, have, you have it edited how you want. And then you put it through like a loudness standard, and then you have like a, a peak normalization. That's the second thing you do. Well, um, because I have software that allows me, I use loudness normalization. But yeah. in many cases, I use peak normalization. I use both okay. actually, but I use one both. or the other, not both. And the compressor part is part of one of those, or it's its own thing. Uh, it's it's one of those. It's 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 its own thing. Uh, dynamic compression is uh, a really a topic all by itself. <laughs> okay, so there's like three processes you can put your audio file through mm -hmm. after you're done editing to make it good. So my 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 pretty much my chain is is that. Um, uh, it's a very simple chain. I don't have a lot of complex chains. Is I edit it. Um, I, for a lot of it, I do just peak normalization. And I suggest negative 3 dB is your peak normalization. That's pretty much zero VU. Um, the, uh, and then I peak, norm, peak normalize it, look for, and then I do a light compression are light limiting just to getting some of the peaky stuff down to a, a level. light vinaigrette <laughs> yes a light vinaigrette <laughs> and then i re-amplify it to the peak normalization of negative three and that usually works pretty good okay and so then what are the different uh programs that you use for each of these like you showed us the loudness meter right well um, um I believe that we're going to be talking about this program maybe in another webinar, which I would like to do, and that is I don't use Audacity anymore. Right. I haven't used Audacity in many years. What do I use, you might ask? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I use something called OCEN Audio for just plain old text or plain old audio editing that has nothing to do with multi-tracks or anything like that. It's donationware, so it's free to use. Throw them a few bucks if you like it. They'll keep producing it. They're really updating it a lot. They're fixing bugs. They're doing everything. They're updating it more than Audacity ever does. And it's out of Brazil, so it's kind of interesting. <laughs> anyway, um, and then because I do something else called Radio Theater Project, which is a personal thing that I do, it's not a KSVR thing. I spent about $400 on a program called Isotope. And that's what you were just seeing was Isotope RX-8. And they the, they just added um, loudness normalization, or they call it loudness control, which really made my day. <laughs> so without a loudness normalization tool, you use you sort of have to go back and forth between dropping it into uh, Ulean or running it as a plugin, seeing that it looks okay, learning how to peak normalize so that you get the proper normal uh, loudness normalization. Um, there are plugins that do this, but there is no free plugins like there is Ulean. But like I said, if you pay for the Ulean, which I think is like $49, then you can just drag and drop onto a onto a, a standalone and it'll give you the loudness in that form that you saw. 
Okay. Cool. Thank and, you. Another, yeah. But the question. yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, Robin. Well, again, you know, they made this standard for European radio and TV. NPR adopted it. For the That's true. I meant to mention that. Minus 24. Also, you know, so. And the, the big problem, and I, I've used transom battles, which has a whole bunch of tutorials on libraries. That's true. Radio libraries and podcast libraries. Explain why there's these different standards for different venues. So, I mean, oh, between like the the ITU European Union version and the American. Well, not so version? much that. I mean, most of the problems that we're having on audio flow has to do with most people want to prepare it for a podcast or to right. play it on an iPhone, and so they want it as loud as they can go, and they don't see why radio should be any different, and they just put out the signal. Minus ten, uh, you can say, but it's you know, it just okay. completely peaks out our. Thing. Why yeah. is are there these differences between these different venues, and what is the standard? If you're going to do both podcasts and radio, shouldn't you do two different things? Okay, two good questions in there. Question one, I will explain, is output source. One of the things I tell people, and one of the things I do, is I do not master the headphones. I say, never master to headphones. <laughs> get a speaker. Get a speaker that you think people will listen to. That's this is your what you list the what you the audience will listen to. It could be an iPhone. And what does an iPhone sound like without um, headphone or uh, earbuds? Or what do they sound like with earbuds? They sound entirely different as if you were listening on your stereo. If anyone has stereos anymore. Or you are listening. And I use this example. It's an old example from the 60s. When I was in school once trying to take a media course or something, they told us they used to master television to a little tiny naked speaker in a Kleenex box. <laughs> because that's what television sounded like. And again, the it's the sound that's coming out. And so that's why YouTube thinks everybody's listening on their iPhone or on their Androids. And so they want to make sure it's loud as possible so people will hear it. Um, television and the European Union, it's on televisions, good televisions, televisions with good speakers. Even the ones that come uh, with the stock speakers in it are better than, you know, iPhones and stuff like that. And I'm trying to remember your second question. Um, well, just the idea that, you know, if you want to produce oh, right. three or four hours producing an hour show or a half hour show, and then you don't bother, you just produce one version at minus 10, all you can say. Right. And, and I'll you give... think that's fine for radio. I mean, that's okay. ridiculous. And there's, and there is two, actually, there is, that, that that's the second wonderful question. Because I want to say that in the old days, they used to master music for AM radio and home stereo radio. Mastering involving EQing and all that stuff and compression because they knew they were too different. So if they weren't, um, if they wanted to, they should be mastering for both. They should have one for broadcast and one for podcast. But if they don't want to do that, then they should pick a middle ground. Um, they're... Uh, the BBC chooses stereo negative 18, mono negative 21 as their podcast standard. And that's a pretty good one. It gets the loudness for the iPhone, but it doesn't blow out your ears if you wear headphones or such like that. So you should come up with a standard to tell them this is what you have to do if you are in control of that. If you're not in control, well, I don't know what to say because... The one thing NPR did, because we were part of Content Depot at that time when they did their test, they went, basically did a loudness test on all the programming on Content Depot and found it all over the place. So they told people, you want to put it up? It's got to be negative 23 loudness. You have no choice. <laughs> and if we, if you don't, we'll make it. So, so how do they do that? In other words, put audio They just run it through a loudness normalizer. Yeah. But I mean, put audio for 
like I would like at least if each audio person had to put an LUSA for it, so that at least they'd admit what it is. I mean, if they and put minus 10, at least I know that I got to do something with it. But there's no control at all on audio code. It's just, it just goes through there. Well, that would be interesting. That's why I was kind of hoping Otis would be here because that was yeah. a question I was going to ask him. Because I've asked him and he doesn't, he didn't really have an answer. Oh. I know so there you guys are talking cool. about an uh, a loudness standard for audio port. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. even if we just said instead of minus even if it just said what was the loudness minus eighteen, if it was all minus eighteen, and then at least you could set all your controls and your console and your automation software to broadcast so that, so that they don't jump from one program to the other. I mean, the problem is is that so many uh, small stations don't have you know, someone on the board 24-7, they're running their automation program, there's no one listening to it, and so this, they put a, an audio for a program and it goes from minus 24 to minus 10, to, you know, it's ridiculous. So how could audio code kind of enforce some kind of standard? Obviously, PRX is on it. If you want to enforce a standard, or at least tell people, maybe there's a way of measuring the loudness, so you go, oh, I don't, think I want that or people can write in saying it's too loud <laughs> well I I, I again tell people and like I say some of them refuse to change it. They say, Look, people so our engineer and this is at a Pacifica station why? they won't change it. You know, so we just stop sharing that program but that's you know, just, how, how can people not care about how it sounds on the radio when they do well, I mean crazy that is a very good um, point is, do you want, you know, uh, NPR and, and uh, Content Depot did also another study that said if there's a change of loudness or just actually volume, we'll call it volume, of 5 to 10%, um, people will turn it off. You know, how off, as an example, you're, you're listening to commercial radio and they're playing a music and you're digging in, and on comes the commercial. What do you do? You hit the button. <laughs> This is why they do their 10 minutes of commercials and 50 minutes of music. <laughs> I mean, in our case, luckily, we have an Orban processor at our 11,000 foot transfer. And it actually corrects them. It doesn't sound quite as bad as it does coming right out of the phone. But it still is crazy because, again, when you go from minus 10 and then it's compressed to get it down to more than 11, yeah. you well, lose the audio. The thing is, is that the, at the compressor, for your transmitter and it's too loud, it's going to crush it down and it's going to make it sound crap. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Just bad all over, all around. And then people will turn you off and they'll never come to the part where that's good. And so what the purpose of this is, so if you want to, we can, you can help people at your own station, get a better product, understand why and how to get a better product. And um, there's, um, and that's why I want to do these other two webinars, one with Ocean Audio, and one with Reaper. So I was going to say I don't use Audacity anymore, but when I do multi-tracking, I don't use Audacity. Audacity is a nasty multi-tracking program. <laughs> but you know, we don't have five hundred or six hundred dollars for Pro Tools, and I wouldn't recommend anyway. I hear it crashes all the time. <laughs> Reaper is what I use. And I'm not saying that's the only tool. If you want to do logic or you want if you want to do Pro Tools or you want to do um, any of the other and digital then audio workstations, then that's yeah. fine. But I like Reaper because it's only 60 bucks <laughs> for two versions. It's no no rentals or anything. And and this might be the number of times it's crashed since I've used it for that number of years. Yeah, I mean, we don't have problems. Well, I was just something there was. I saw some an interesting video. A guy uh, spoofed uh, Pro Tools. Well, it it has its problems, but we use Audiophonic to do the leveling. If, you know, if you, see, one of there's two different things. With there's one thing to try to get it fit in the atmosphere, but another thing, say you're recording at a presentation we have the speaker and then someone oh yeah that's that's question difficult. from the audience and the level drops and then the speaker moves back and forth from the mic oh audiophonic is a great program that, that brings up 
low spots and bring down its high spots so it evens out. Now it's kind of loses the dynamic range in doing that to a certain extent. That's but sort it of makes called very very good for something that's really understandable for the listener. Yeah, that's that's a, a, a leveler program. Yeah. What did you guys say that was audio chronic? Audio phonic. Yeah. Oh phonic. <laughs> that's a plug in to uh, Pro Tools, right? It's a separate. It oh, it is a separate separate, pl- separate program. Yeah. Well, it's Isotope. Just, it's under a hundred dollars. Oh well, that's good. Isotope is both a plug-in. You can put it into your digital audio workstation, or you can use it as a standalone. So, um, so um, so Go the two with more that you're going to say. That's so sorry the, for the interrupting something. No, no problem. Uh, so the 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 I want to go over the. And I'm going to be straightforward and honest to anybody here who uses Audacity. I'm trying to remove, I'm trying to get people off Audacity, off the Audacity track into something else. And I'm trying to make it as less expensive as possible because I know that people don't have a lot of money. And Ocean Audio is donationware, so it's free. And Reaper is only 60 bucks, specifically if you're nonprofit or make less than $20,000. Even if you make more than $20,000 a year it's only $225 and I'm not here to tell but like I said you can buy logic doesn't matter (laughs) (laughs) Um, before you go to the next thing I see Julie has a question on chat Uh, trying to understand how many places people are controlling loudness I'm hearing the actual file processing at the transmitter thought I heard Within the automation software, is that correct? Are there any other? Yes, that's that seems about the three places. Okay. Um, we use Radio Logic. Uh, we have uh, a program that just basically does normalization, peak normalization. And so, if a file is really low and really high, it doesn't do anything. That's where the compressor at the transmitter does the job. I'm just answering questions. I'm pretty much tapped out with my <laughs> webinar. <laughs> Anyone else have any thoughts or questions come to mind? Way back at the beginning, you yes. said um, this is about <clears throat> recording, not about live. Right. Can you talk about what you meant by that? Well, um, meaning that you can use loudness in live situations. But the that's where the first, the short term and the momentary come in, because those are most like reactive, like uh, uh, a VU meter. Um, the uh, integrated is what helps you with the overall file and audio. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. one of the things we're planning on doing the radio station is putting in a loudness meter so people can get a real time sense of how loud and how uh, not loud they are. So what what would be the application if just for live broadcasting? Um, You're trying to reach a level. So let's say you want to reach Mm. the negative 23 level of television. So you tell people, don't look at the VU meter, look at this loudness meter and look at the short term and you'll see that, well, look, you're starting to rise up here. And you can like a VU meter, peak meter, you can watch the, the momentary meter and it will start bouncing around. And and that is the important thing is it's sort of like VU in a sense that so you want to hit zero, but you don't mind if it goes above or below a little bit. But the short term, and then you can watch the integrated too, because as you, your show is watching, you can kind of see it rise and fall in, mm-hmm. sli- in increments. So it's a way of judging without having to try and guess where the meter is. Sure. And I think it should be used in more radio stations to get a, a better sense of how sound is going out. Anyone else have some thoughts? Explained it all. I, I hope so. Well, that's a, it's a, that was a lot of awesome information. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Well, I hope it didn't overwhelm people and I hope it was explained well or. Oh, very much. Yeah. I mean, even if it was, I mean, it's a lot, but like for people like me, we can just go back and rewatch it. So, okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
there is, if you search, there's something called demystifying loudness, where I got some of the information so that I at least was talking accurately. <laughs> That's a, a video? It, no, it's a, it's a, it, it was a uh, web page. Excuse me. Oh, and okay. If, if you type in demystifying uh, loudness, it'll come up. Okay, that sounds like a good uh, resource too. Mm -hmm. Starting me on a journey to a new world. Well, it is, and it's a fun world. It can make your sound so much better, and and your life is good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And then, so we're gonna look. We're gonna get to see you again on talking about ocean. Is that how you say it? Ocean? Oh, I, well, it's it's spelled O-C-E-N. I'm not really sure Ocen. how it's pronounced. Okay. Uh, but I think they say ocean audio, yes. Ocean audio and reaper. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Anyone yeah. else? I want to give a, a last, last, last call for questions or comments. And this is a big topic. No, I appreciate it, Joseph. Thank you for clearing out some things. I mean, I thought I, I have some things that I do when I edit audio, but you gave me some more um, details on, you know, how to get your audio a little better. Certain, you know, yeah, so I appreciate it. Beware of compression. It can really ruin a file. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just throw in a, a comment, uh, especially since we're talking about compression, even though that wasn't the uh, intention, but um, my way back very first job um i was working on live broadcast and recording as well but live broadcast of a symphony orchestra and what we used to do back then was sit through the rehearsal with the score mark the loud parts and the soft parts and do it manually mm -hmm. in real time <laughs> Oh, wow. That's a big job. Well, thank you. I appreciate it and I enjoyed doing this. You guys were a great audience. Yeah, thank you, thank you Joseph. And thank you everyone for coming. And uh, side note, I thought of, so it sounds like compression might be a good topic for us too? It might be, if uh -oh. you are technically oriented. Oh, okay, so that's like advanced classes. That's an advanced class, yes. Okay. All right, we'll think about it. Yep. I don't want to over. I don't want to <laughs> load it all on you. I don't, <laughs> you I don't mind. I ones. enjoy well, doing okay. this. Well, um, I think it'd be great. I'm sure there would be some people who would show up. I think um, you guys would. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you again, everyone, for coming today. It was great having you, and thank you, Joseph, for a lovely presentation. You're you very good way of. Um, thinking th things through with everybody, so we appreciate that. Oh, okay. If you could send me the video, I would be appreciative. Okay, yep. Um, I'm going to put it on the uh, station manager's list tomorrow, so everyone can review it if they like. Okay. Okay? All right. Well, with that, thanks again, and everyone have a good rest of your Thursday. Alrighty. Bye. Alrighty. Bye. Take care. <laughs>